The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, plans to put members of the cyber hacking community on a new advisory committee. The goal of that plan is to catch cyber weaknesses before they become an actual breach. Chris Kemiski is former Dep Deputy Undersecretary for Management at the Department of Homeland Security. Currently, he's the CEO of Kemiski Strategic Solutions. Chris, welcome to the program. Thank you. So where did this idea come from to, to reach out mm -hmm. to the hacker community? Well, it's not an original idea with Jenny Easterly, but it is certainly an innovation of late. Uh, back in 2012, the, there were efforts to approach the hacker community uh, with Jeff Moss, who is the founder of DEF CON and Black Hat uh, Hacker Conventions, and he uh, served at DHS on the Homeland Security Advisory Council for eight years. And so it was a really good start to open the door to the ethical hacking community and having them much more involved in what DHS was trying to accomplish. Okay, so you need to explain ethical hacking community, because when you think of hackers, you think of the criminals. That's right. Often Sometimes it's those who are perpetrating crimes or involved with crim criminal out, uh, outfits or nation states that are the, the hacking community. Uh, but there is a group of hackers, white hat or ethical hackers, that are out there that do want to be supportive of government. They still have a fair amount of skepticism, uh, but that's a good thing when you bring it to uh, threat hunting and, and red teaming and the kinds of penetration testing that uh, government does need. So what's their motivation to help the government? Because really, they could make a lot of money selling you know, what they find to nefarious actors. No, that's right, and I think part of it is the challenge. You know, the, uh, this started with DOD and NSA, who you know, have uh, bug bounties and, and different efforts to you know, hack the Pentagon uh, contests. And I think it was a challenge at first for many hackers that otherwise it would be a criminal enterprise you know, trying to do those kinds of things. Uh, but with the imprimatur of the government on it, they can engage in these kinds of activities uh, and not run afoul of the law. So tell me about how this has been successful elsewhere. You mentioned that this is not a new idea. Has it actually produced? Yeah, I think it has. I think NSA is probably the best example of this, where they've brought the hacking community in, and they've had an opportunity to, to talk about what kinds of penetrations and things of that nature are going on. And so it really is a good uh, opening of the, 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 the door for a lot of those in the hacker community that can be of assistance. So tell me about these conferences that you mentioned, Black Hat and DEF CON. What kind of insights um, do do they uh, I mean what do they do at these conferences yeah. like what are they actually talking about you've been I, yes, I assume. in the past yeah okay. it's, it's really a, a great uh, gathering of uh, talent around cybersecurity and in recent years government has been much more active uh, and prominent in the, the agenda and in speaking roles and so that's why I was glad to see Jenny Easterly as one of her first acts as CISA director was to go to DEF CON and Black Hat and really invite the hacker community to participate in what she's trying to accomplish at CISA so what what are they going to be providing to CISA? Like, what are they being asked for, and what's their product, so to speak? Well, as you know, CISA is a fairly new agency. It's only three years old, and so uh, one of the things that they'll be doing is helping with advisory uh, work inside of the department, uh, helping them understand some of the dynamics of you know the, the current threat landscape uh, and what might be emerging on the horizon. And oftentimes, those in the, the hacker community are much more adept or out front on, on knowing what those things are, and so it's a really nice balance. So what are your recommendations then for implementing this uh, advisory council? How do we make it effective for CISA? Well, I think the best thing for it to do is to be inclusive and, and transparent, you know, making sure that these individuals are at the table, uh, but really giving them the opportunity to weigh in and not just have it as window dressing or just another committee uh, at DHS. And I think that the leadership at CISA and the department is serious about doing this. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gone out and really opened this door. Because once you do that, and then if you don't deliver on your promises, then that community is going to say, look, we're not going to support this in the future. What are your other ideas, Chris, for working with the private sector, specifically on this issue of cyber and protecting um, critical infrastructure? Well, as we know, 85% of the country's infrastructure is in the private sector's hands, so there's really no way around this. You've got to work with the private sector. And really understanding the, the, the threat landscape, the vulnerabilities that they're encountering, particularly these days with ransomware and things of that nature, I think that the government is starting to take steps uh, to you know, have transparency and require reporting. Uh, but it's going to take a while to get to a point where you're in a better position across all 16 critical infrastructures. Do you see any problems with this? Do you foresee anything with these, with this um, new advisory council, or is it a win-win for everybody? 
I think it can be very promising. Uh, the thing is trust, right? They're trying to build trust uh, with the hacking community, uh, and that's always a, a challenge. They're skeptical, as I indicated at the start. Uh, so you've got to really build that over time. Uh, but I think that Jen Easterly and the team at CISA uh, really understands that and has worked with that community for a great deal of time. And so I think that they can build that relationship and, and make it positive for both sides. Any other recommendations, Chris, finally, to um, really strengthen the nation's cyber defenses and, and using the resources that we have. Yeah, I think that the, the EO that the president issued in March was a good step in, the, in that direction. There's another EO that's going to be clarifying roles and responsibilities that Chris Inglis spoke with you about recently. Uh, so I think that having the rules of the road clear and articulated will really help uh, the government uh, when things go wrong. All right, well, let's hope so because we all need <laughs> good cyber defenses. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you.